All right, Kansans, you going to get that tax cut or not? We'll see how it plays out there in Topeka. We know that Governor Kelly has laid out a tax plan uh, where she wants to cut sales tax, uh, cut Social Security tax income. There's a lot on the table that uh, she is willing to cut. But one thing that she is not wanting to do is cut the state income tax. Uh, She was on this show last week, and she made the announcement that she would be vetoing the bill that the uh, Republicans were going to send to her desk, which included a lot of what she wanted, but she was not going to go ahead with a flat tax. Uh, So Dave Trobert, Kansas Policy Institute, is joining us on KCMO. He is uh, going to respond to that with an article he wrote that came out yesterday at kansaspolicy.org. Headlined, Governor Kelly's claim that a flat tax creates deficits is not true, and she knows it. Uh, Dave, good morning. I'm not sure if you caught our conversation last week with the governor, but um, what did you think about the income tax rate in general and how the state should be looking at this? Uh, Good morning, Pete. No, I didn't catch the interview last week, but, um, you know, here's, here's the bottom line. She doesn't like the flat tax because... She wants to keep the high rate, 5.7%, on families who earn more than $60,000 and individuals who make more than $30,000. And she's willing to sacrifice more savings to low-income people to achieve her goal. I mean, this is the woman who says we need to do more for those who earn the least, and she is turning her back on them to get her political Uh, viewpoint uh, across on punishing people who make more money. Now, she said um, on this show last week that as she goes around Kansas and talks to Kansans, they're much more concerned about their grocery tax bill and their Social Security taxes than they are income taxes. That's what she says anecdotally her experience is going around this state. What about you? That's not what the polling shows. Um, You know, anecdotally, It depends on how you ask the question. If you only ask questions about grocery tax, then that's what they're going to talk about. Um, But it's the the polling shows, uh, as well as the economic activity shows, that Kansas needs income tax relief. Now, her bill does provide a little bit, and I do mean a little bit, uh, on on what the Social Security tax is a separate issue, and that's in both the flat tax bill and her proposal Mm -hmm. her other income tax saves a maximum of sixty two dollars to one hundred and fourteen dollars depending upon uh you know your uh, filing status a hundred and fourteen dollars is not income tax relief it's not the flat tax bill provides two to three hundred dollars worth of income tax relief to low income people. And she doesn't want people to know that the flat tax is better than her plan for low income people. It feels to me, Dave Traubert, that um, she's really got the upper hand here, not only because she's obviously the governor, but she rolled out her tax plan a couple of weeks ago and she got a couple of Republicans on board. And now she calls this a bipartisan plan, which technically she is not wrong about. So what do you do if you are Republican leadership in Topeka and, you know, you're going to have to basically override a veto to try to cut income taxes this session? Do you, I don't want to say give up on it, but do you take what you can get and try to move on? Or is there another way to kind of go about doing this? No, you don't take what you can get. Uh, There, there are ways that they could get more. Uh, Part of it is smart messaging. Uh, I mean, they have to play the messaging game. You know, she she trotted out uh, two Republicans at her press conference who uh, their main goal was they they weren't concerned about tax policy. They are wanting to get revenge on Republican leaders because they didn't like the way they were treated. This is and so it's I mean, keep in mind, this one of them was Dennis Pyle. He's the reason we have Governor Kelly as a governor. Uh, because he wanted to get political revenge. Uh, what the Republicans should do is is go on the messaging campaign. Uh, 
They need to stand, put a big poster up at a press conference and show that their plan is better for low-income people. Make the media cover it. You know, if you, you're the only one I know of that is talking about the difference, or at least uh, for low-income people. The Cap Journal had a big story yesterday. Oh, look at the little bit that you're going to get from the flat tax plan. But they don't talk about the governor's plan because they know it's worse. They've hmm. seen the numbers, and so they're going to give – her cover for, so you know you know you're not going to get friendly treatment from the media you're going to have to go out and force it and you have to keep messaging and she'll she'll veto this maybe they can muster the votes to overturn it but if not you keep coming back and you keep the pressure on and you have to keep showing what she is really up to and and that is she is willing to sacrifice her alleged constituency the people she cares most about, those who need tax relief the most, she will sacrifice them so she can punish people who make more than $60,000. Now, you mentioned Dennis. I don't know a Dennis pile. I know a Gomer pile. I'm not sure I'm familiar with any Dennis piles. But, uh, yeah, it, as long as she's got Republicans in the Senate, though, who for whatever reason, whether it's personal or otherwise, um, are, are not going to sway back and potentially override a veto, then – it's a big uphill battle, is it not? I mean, let's just, I, I know we can talk about the the minutia and the semantics of trying to get it done, but I don't see the pathway. I, I just, I don't see the path. Do you see a pathway to this? It's, it's a big uphill climb. I yeah. mean, the house looks pretty good. I think they'll have, they'd have the votes in the house to override. It, it really comes down to maybe one vote in the Senate. Yeah. So if they can't get that, then they have to come back with something else. And and what what we've talked about they should do is go back and call her bluff. Okay, Governor, you want three rates. We'll keep three rates. We're just going to reduce the rates and and do everything else and make her say, no, that's not really what I want. I want to punish people who make more money. And, and you know, she talks about there, there's, oh, this is going to create a deficit. That's malarkey. I mean, look, we have a $4 billion deficit or, or surplus right now. Mm-hmm. Her plan, which includes sales tax, property, and everything else, would cost about a billion dollars over three years. Now, she doesn't have any, she said the budget doesn't have any harm with that. The flat tax plan is $1.6 billion. So somehow, $600 million more is going to wipe out a $4 billion surplus. Mm. The math doesn't add up. Okay, Mm -hmm. they need to be able to show that you have to continue to show that she is not telling the truth about these. Now, the only way that the flat tax in her mind might create a deficit is if she's planning to spend billions more and just isn't telling us about it yet. That's possible. Hmm. But but there's always something missing. You need to keep this is a messaging war. And we need to get out in front of it. Go back, call. The, if this doesn't work, you go back and call the bluff. You keep showing them that she will not elect because her number one goal is to keep the high rate, which is the highest in the region. It's one of the reasons that Kansas it keeps falling farther behind on job creation. She talks about, oh, we've got this great economy. No, we don't. Private sector jobs were only up six tenths of a percent uh, through the first 11 months of 2023. The December numbers aren't out yet. Yeah. Over the previous four years, we were ranked number 44 in the country. This is not a good economy, and it's getting worse as all of our neighboring states reduce taxes around us. Dave Traubert with the Kansas Policy Institute, the article that we referenced earlier, kansaspolicy.org. That's kansaspolicy.org. It's the uh, top article there on the site. Dave, uh, we always appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it, Pete. Keep fighting for freedom. All right, there you go. Dave Trobert, thank you on KCMO Talk Radio, 95.7 FM.